Today, we will step into the thrilling world of aviation history as we travel back to visit the dangerous skies of World War II. Join us on a fascinating journey as we uncover the surprising tales behind three of the most influential dive bombers in the Pacific Theater. From the amazing SBD Dauntless to the legendary Helldiver and beyond, get ready to witness the courage, innovation, and sheer determination that characterize the pilots of these remarkable flying machines in some of the decisive battles of the war. Before we start, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you. The first most influential dive bomber is best remembered as the bomber that delivered the fatal blows to the Japanese carriers at the Battle of Midway in June 1942. In the first year of the war in the Pacific Theater, this airplane is credited with assisting in sinking six enemy aircraft carriers, one battleship, three cruisers, one submarine, and multiple other smaller ships. Although initially deemed outdated and slated for replacement before the onset of World War II in the Pacific, the SBD, or Scout Bomber Douglas, would, in fact, live up to the nickname given to it by its crews, slow but deadly. The Douglas SBD Dauntless was a World War II American all-metal, single-engine, low-wing monoplane, naval scout plane, and dive bomber. Douglas Aircraft manufactured it from 1939 through 1944. In 1935, the design work for the Northrop XBT-1 began. Two years later, Douglas took over the Northrop Corporation, and the ongoing projects were continued under the new ownership. Ed Heinemann led a team of engineers in charge of the design of the Dauntless. Some of the innovations introduced in this dive bomber, compared to previous models, include perforated dive brakes, fully retractable landing gear, and later, illuminated gun sights. After further modifications were ordered in November 1937, the BT-2 emerged, laying the foundation for the SBD. In April 1939, the Navy placed an order for 144 SBDs. The Dauntless did not have folding wings, as most aircraft carrier-based airplanes had. This was to provide structural strength to the airplane. After the Navy initially ordered the SBD-1, it identified some concerns that rendered it not fully combat ready. The primary issue was the limited fuel capacity, which restricted the range of the Dauntless. The Navy decided to accept the first 57 unmodified SBD-1s and allocated them to the Marines, who primarily operated from land bases and received these aircraft in June 1940. The subsequent 87 planes from the initial contract were designated as SBD-2. Although the adjustments in this version didn't eliminate all the concerns, they did bring about improvements, especially in addressing the limitations related to range. The Dauntless began to replace the outdated SBU Corsair and Curtis SBC Helldiver dive bombers and squadrons on U.S. carriers. Deliveries of the SBD-2 to squadrons VS-2 and VB-2 on board the USS Lexington commenced in November 1940 and the USS Enterprises VS-6 and VB-6 soon received their aircraft as well. The next iteration was the SBD-3. Deliveries of this variant started in March 1941. It featured enhanced armor, self-sealing fuel tanks, and four machine guns. Following this, the SBD-4 came into play in late 1942, incorporating a 24-volt electrical system enhancement that permitted the fitting of a radar. Some units were converted into SBD-4P reconnaissance aircraft. The SBD-5, the most widely produced version, emerged mainly from the Douglas plant in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It boasted a 1,200 horsepower engine and an increased ammunition supply, with over 2,400 units built. Other improvements in this version include a reflector sight and a heated windscreen. The final version was the SBD-6, which introduced additional improvements but concluded production in the summer of 1944. The U.S. Army Air Force had its own variant, known as the A-24 Banshee. Distinctly lacking a tail hook for carrier landings, it featured a pneumatic tire replacing the solid tail wheel. The Dauntless saw its first combat in the Pacific on December 7, 1941, during the attack on Pearl Harbor. On that fateful day, 18 Navy SBD-2s, launched from the Enterprise as it returned to Hawaii from Wake Island, arrived just in time to join the chaos of the Japanese attack. Unfortunately, seven Dauntless were either shot down or crash-landed. However, amid the chaos, Dauntless pilots successfully claimed to have shot down two Japanese aircraft. 
Just three days later, a Dauntless had the distinction of sinking the first Japanese warship of World War II by an American airplane, the Imperial Japanese Navy submarine I-70, off the coast of Hawaii. In the Battle of the Coral Sea, which took place from May 4 to May 8, 1942, the Douglas SBD Dauntless played a significant role. This encounter was notable for being the first carrier-based aircraft battle in history. During the battle, SBD Dauntless dive bombers operating from the aircraft carriers Yorktown and Lexington damaged the Japanese carrier Shokaku and contributed to the sinking of the light carrier Shoho, hitting it multiple times. At a crucial turning point during World War II, the Douglas SBD Dauntless played a pivotal role in the Battle of Midway, marking one of its most significant contributions to the American war effort. In early June 1942, four squadrons of Navy SBD dive bombers carried out a precision attack that resulted in the sinking of all four Japanese fleet carriers present. This devastating assault unfolded with remarkable speed, disabling the carriers Akagi, Kaga, and Sorio within a mere six minutes. Later in the day, the SBDs targeted the carrier Hirio, delivering fatal blows. The SBD's impact extended beyond carrier strikes, as they also targeted two heavy cruisers from the Midway Bombardment Group. The cruisers sustained heavy damage, with the Mikuma ultimately sinking. This impressive display of precision and efficiency showcased the effectiveness of the Dauntless at a critical moment in the Pacific theater, altering the course of the war in favor of the American forces. During the Guadalcanal campaign, the SBD Dauntless aircraft played a significant role operating from American carriers and Henderson Field on Guadalcanal itself. Their impact was particularly felt in the waters of New Georgia Sound, commonly known as the Slot, where SBDs proved highly effective against Japanese shipping during daylight hours. Their successes included the sinking of the Japanese carrier Ryujo near the Solomon Islands on August 24, 1942. Throughout the six-month campaign, SBD's crews inflicted damage on three other Japanese carriers, adding to the mounting losses for the enemy forces. The Dauntless was involved in multiple missions during the war in the Pacific. The Battle of the Philippine Sea marked the final significant involvement of carrier-borne SBDs in major engagements. Marine squadrons continued to operate SBDs until the conclusion of World War II. In the Atlantic Ocean, the SBD Dauntless participated in Operation Torch, the Allied landings in North Africa in November 1942. Operating from the USS Ranger and two escort carriers, SBDs contributed to the success of this strategic battle. Eleven months later, during Operation Leader, the SBDs made their European debut, launching from the aircraft carrier Ranger. The Dauntless conducted attacks on Nazi German shipping around Bodo in Norway. Their involvement in these actions showcased the versatility and effectiveness of the SBD Dauntless in different theaters of the war. In November 1943, the more modern Curtis SB-2 Sea Helldiver entered active service, gradually replacing the Dauntless. The SBDs remained in service with the U.S. Navy until July 1944, participating in their final mission during an attack on the island of Guam. The Marines continued to employ them in the Philippines campaign. Towards the end of World War II, most Dauntless aircraft were assigned training and utility roles. Other countries used the Dauntless during World War II and during the years after. Some of the main operators were in the United States, France, the United Kingdom, New Zealand, Mexico, and Chile. In conclusion, the SBD Dauntless stands as a versatile, reliable, and highly effective dive bomber that left an indelible mark in the books of naval history. Throughout crucial naval engagements, it proved instrumental, serving as a key player in the Allied victories that reshaped the course of the Pacific theater during World War II. The next dive bomber on our list played a crucial role in the early Japanese offensives in the Pacific, including the attacks on Pearl Harbor, Darwin, Australia, and various naval battles. This airplane participated in the sinking of a multitude of Allied warships in the Pacific and Indian Oceans during the war. The Aichi D-3A Type 99 was the primary dive bomber of the Imperial Japanese Navy. Like the SDB Dauntless, the Aichi was considered an outdated aircraft at the beginning of the war in the Pacific. The Aichi D-3A was a single-engine, all-metal monoplane dive bomber, notable for its elliptical wings, lack of retractable landing gear, and dive brakes. It accommodated a crew of two, a pilot and a rear gunner-slash-observer. 
The development of the D-3A started in mid-1936, when the Japanese Navy issued the 11 Shi specification for a monoplane carrier-based dive bomber to replace the existing D-1A biplanes then in service. The initial prototype of the Aichi D-3A was finished in December 1937, and flight trials commenced a month later, leading to its designation as the D-3A-1. However, initial tests revealed some challenges. The aircraft was deemed underpowered and faced directional instability in wide turns. Additionally, in tighter turns, it had a tendency to snap roll. There were also issues with heavy vibrations when the dive brakes were extended. The second aircraft underwent significant modifications before delivery in an effort to address the identified issues. Performance was enhanced by fitting a more powerful engine installed in a redesigned cowling. Additionally, the vertical tail was enlarged to counteract directional instability. The wings underwent redesign and strengthening, and improved dive brakes were incorporated. While these modifications successfully addressed several issues, the problem of directional instability persisted. In December 1939, the Navy placed an order for the aircraft, designating it as the Navy Type 99 Carrier Bomber Model 11. The production models had slightly smaller wings and more power with the 1,000 horsepower Kinsei 43 or 1,070 horsepower Kinsei 44 engines. Adding a long dorsal finstrake starting midway down the rear fuselage resolved the persistent directional instability issue and made the aircraft highly maneuverable. In June 1942, an upgraded version of the D-3A1, now powered by a 1,299 horsepower Kensei 54 engine, underwent testing and received the designation D-3A2, or Model 12. The increased power had an impact on range, prompting further modifications. Additional fuel tanks were incorporated, bringing the total tank capacity to 900 liters or 240 gallons. The armament included two Type 97 fixed forward-firing 7.7mm or .303-inch machine guns and one Type 92 7.7mm or .303-inch machine gun at the rear end of the cockpit, which the rear gunner operated. The normal bomb load was a single 250 kg bomb carried under the fuselage, swung out under the propeller and released by a trapeze to assist clearing the propeller. Two additional 60 kg bombs could be carried on wing racks, located under each wing, outboard of the dive brakes. In November 1939, the D-3A-1 dive bomber entered combat, a month before its official acceptance as the Navy Type 99. Nakajima deployed several units to the 14th Air Group stationed at Haikou on Hainan Island in South China. Following the capture of Nanning, the D-3A-1 dive bombers remained active in the region throughout 1940. In May of the same year, the 12th Air Group became the second frontline unit to adopt the new D-3A-1 dive bombers. Their initial missions included participating in the capture of Ichang and conducting anti-shipping operations on the Yangtze River, west of Ichang, to disrupt Chinese supplies from Chongqing. Following the invasion of Indochina in autumn 1940, the 14th Air Group operated out of Hanoi, undertaking missions targeting Kunming and the Burma Road. During the Pearl Harbor attack, 51 Aichi D-3A valves belonging to the first wave of attacks targeted primarily battleships stationed in the harbor. In the second wave, 78 Aichis participated in the attack. The targets assigned were cruisers and other high-value ships. Following the attack on Pearl Harbor, the D-3A-1 actively participated in all significant Japanese carrier operations within the first 10 months of the war. A notable achievement occurred during their Indian Ocean raid in April 1942, when D-3A-1 dive bombers achieved over 80% hits with their bombs in attacks on two heavy cruisers and an aircraft carrier belonging to the British Royal Navy. In 1942, dive bombing attacks carried out by D-3A-1 and D-3A-2 dive bombers played a significant role in the sinking of three U.S. fleet carriers the Lexington at the Battle of the Coral Sea, the Yorktown at the Battle of Midway, and the Hornet at the Battle of the Santa Cruz Islands. Additionally, they inflicted damage on the carrier Enterprise during both the Battle of the Eastern Solomons and the Battle of the Santa Cruz Islands. Apart from operating from carriers, D-3A dive bombers were also deployed from land bases during the Solomon Islands operations. They played a role in the Guadalcanal Campaign, Operation Igo, Operation SE, and Operation Aro.
Moreover, they were involved in the New Guinea campaign, participating in the Battle of Milne Bay and the Battle of Bunagana. Throughout the war, the D-3A dive bombers frequently collaborated with the Nakajima K torpedo bomber in joint attacks on enemy warships. This coordinated strategy often resulted in the sinking of enemy vessels through a combination of bomb and torpedo strikes. With the introduction of the Yokosuka D-4 Waisuise, the Aichi D-3A-2s were reassigned to land-based units or operated from smaller carriers incapable of accommodating the fast-landing Suisse. As American forces invaded the Philippines in 1944, land-based D-3A-2s participated in the campaign facing significant challenges due to their outdated design, resulting in heavy losses. In the war's final year, the D-3A-2s were repurposed for kamikaze missions. In conclusion, the Aichi D-3A Vel emerged as a surprisingly versatile and impactful dive bomber during World War II. From its early technical challenges to its crucial role in various naval operations, the D-3A demonstrated adaptability and resilience. Its participation in key battles, such as Pearl Harbor and the sinking of several U.S. fleet carriers, showcased its significance in shaping the course of the war in the Pacific. Despite evolving technologies and changing strategies, the D-3A Vel played a vital role in the Japanese war effort until the very end, leaving a lasting legacy in the records of aviation history. Introducing our final aircraft on the list, a remarkable dive bomber that played a significant role in naval aviation during the closing years of World War II in the Pacific. Despite facing initial challenges such as delays in design and production, and later, complaints about poor handling characteristics, this aircraft eventually emerged as the primary U.S. carrier-based dive bomber of the closing years of World War II. Let's delve into the story of this formidable machine and its crucial contributions to the war effort. The Curtis SB-2 Sea Hell Diver was an American single-engine, two-seat, folding-wing, carrier-based dive bomber. The SB-2C, produced by the Curtis Wright Corporation, was the third carrier-based dive bomber known as the Hell Diver. The chief designer of the Helldiver was Raymond C. Blaylock. The SB-2C was designed as a successor to the Douglas SBD Dauntless. Significantly larger, it could effectively operate from the latest aircraft carriers and had the capacity to carry a diverse range of armaments. Noteworthy was its internal bomb bay, which minimized drag when carrying substantial ordnance. In response to the stringent specifications from both the U.S. Marines and the United States Army Air Forces, the manufacturer integrated features of a, a multi-role aircraft into the design. The Model X SB-2C-1 prototype faced early development challenges linked to its RIDAR-2600 twin cyclone engine. Additional issues included structural weaknesses, subpar handling, directional instability, and unfavorable stall characteristics. The first prototype of the SB-2C, which took its maiden flight on December 18, 1940, unfortunately crashed on February 8, 1941, due to engine failure during approach. Despite the setback, Curtis was tasked with rebuilding it. The reconstructed prototype featured a lengthened fuselage, a larger tail, and the addition of an autopilot to address stability issues. This revised prototype took to the skies once more on October 20, 1941. However, this new model also crashed during diving tests a couple of months later, on December 21st, when the wing failed. The Helldiver faced significant challenges before gaining acceptance by the U.S. Navy. Over 800 modifications were deemed necessary to refine the design and implement changes on the production line. These extensive alterations caused delays, pushing back the Curtis Helldiver's combat debut until November 11, 1943. That day, Squadron VB-17 on the USS Bunker Hill carried out an attack on the Japanese-held port of Rabaul on the island of New Britain. The initial reception of the SB-2C, often nicknamed the Beast, was unfavorable among air crews. Its larger size, increased weight, and reduced range in comparison to the SBD Dauntless it replaced led to strong dissatisfaction. The Helldiver faced several significant issues, including being underpowered, having a shorter range than the SBD, an unreliable electrical system, and inconsistent manufacturing quality control. The Curtis electric propeller and the complex hydraulic system posed frequent maintenance challenges. The resolution to some of these problems came with the introduction of the SB-2C-3 in 1944, featuring the Ryder 2620 twin cyclone engine with 1,900 horsepower and Curtis four-bladed propeller. 
This new engine significantly addressed the persistent lack of power that had troubled the aircraft. Helldivers played a crucial role in various campaigns throughout the Pacific theater, engaging in battles over the Mariana Islands, Formosa, and the Philippines, where they contributed to the sinking of the battleship Musashi. The Helldiver also was present in the battles of Iwo Jima and Okinawa, where they participated in the sinking of the battleship Yamado. Additionally, they were deployed in the 1945 assaults on the Ryukyu Islands and in the Japanese home island of Honshu, conducting tactical attacks on airfields, communications, and shipping. The SB-2C continued its service in active-duty U.S. Navy squadrons until 1947 and remained in Naval Reserve Aviation units until 1950. Surplus aircraft found new homes in the Naval Air Forces of France, Italy, Greece, Portugal, and Thailand. As of late 1943, a land-based version named the A-25 Shrike was introduced. The A-25A faced a changing landscape where the Army Air Force no longer saw a role for dive bombers. The success of fighter aircraft like the P-47 Thunderbolt demonstrated their capabilities to effectively carry out tactical air support missions. In November 1943, the Royal Australian Air Force received the first shipment of 10 A-25 Shrikes in Australia. However, the Australian Air Force had determined that dive bombing was no longer a relevant tactic, opting to phase out dive bombers in favor of light bombers. Consequently, the order for the remaining 140 Shrikes was cancelled. The Helldivers' service with the British paralleled the Australian experience with the aircraft. Of the 450 ordered, only 26 were delivered to the Royal Navy's fleet air arm, designated as the Helldiver 1. Following unsatisfactory tests by the British assessment team that highlighted appalling handling, eh, none of the British Helldivers saw action. In conclusion, the SB-2C Helldiver, though initially marred by developmental challenges and mixed reviews, evolved into a workhorse for the United States Navy during World War II. Fighting its early reputation, the Helldiver played a crucial role in pivotal Pacific battles, contributing to the Allied victory. The aircraft's adaptability and improved versions underline its enduring impact on naval aviation history. In summary, the dive bombers of World War II, including the Dauntless, Aichi Val, and Helldiver, each played distinctive roles in shaping the course of naval aviation during the conflict. Marked by successes and challenges, these aircraft underscore the complexity and significance of aerial warfare during World War II, leaving an enduring legacy in the books of military aviation history. We hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you found the content engaging and informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up. For those who haven't already, we invite you to subscribe to our channel. By subscribing, you'll stay updated on all our upcoming content, ensuring you never miss out on the fascinating narratives we have in store. We look forward to seeing you in our next episodes.